received some very interesting comments on my video titled Intro to Why I Don't Eat Meat. And I actually love the comments because it brought clarity to the topic from my point of view and the point of view of those that wanted to engage in that dialogue. And my responses in the comment stream was candid and without filter. And so the summary is, is that 99% of the people that responded in, in the form of comments as of right now were fixed in their position, but they wanted to express their opposition to what I had presented. And there was 1% that engaged in more substantive dialogue where there was more of a compromise in terms of not me changing my view, but being able to express more information to them that help them in their journey of health. Because that's why some have opted for a carnivore diet. That is why some have decided to continue to eat meat because they do believe in and accept the information that exists that show meat as being beneficial to them. And then there are others that don't necessarily embrace the consumption of meat from a science or research point of view, but it feels good to them, is the bottom line. And that's okay. My intention, again, was not to convince or convert anyone because my time is more valuable to me than to pursue that as a, a journey or path for me to follow. I have many things that I am trying to do and conversion is not one of them. I used to do that back in the days when I was religious, when I practiced religion and I was an actual uh, church certified evangelist, but I don't do that anymore. So, so anyway, what I'm going to share with you is some, a, a reading of the notes I gathered in watching Dr. Yaki's presentation on protein and its effect on the body. I put together some notes a few weeks ago and my intention was to convert it to like a PowerPoint. Well, I don't actually use PowerPoint. Uh, Libri Impress, LibriOffice Impress. But I was going to create this nice, beautiful presentation with graphics and all this kind of thing. But I ran out of time for that. And so I wanted to disclose the information that I gathered about animal protein from the viewpoint of Dr. Yaki and what I understood from that information. Like I said, we had quite a bit of rain today. I had to wait out the rain uh, for about close to an hour today because I really like having discussions that I'm recording uh, in this vlog, this video log out in nature. I feel the most comfortable in nature and the positive side effect of this rain is that it has given me free reign of the park. And so I really appreciate nature for arranging that for me. Sometimes you just have to be patient, wait for the opportunity, 
an opportunity will arise. But this matter of animal protein and the complex amino acid structures that it represents and that it works in tandem with is an important topic in terms of understanding how animal protein can affect our health long term for those of us whose bodies may not work so well with animal protein long term. And in some people, the negative effects of animal protein are more pronounced, and in others, it is more gradual over time to where it's almost indetectable, but it still constitutes a narrowing of lifespan and the quality of life. And then there are others, if you go back to one of my earlier videos, that small percentage out of the larger percentage, that small percentage who can deal with animal protein very successfully, but for whom there are no long-term studies because there is a good subset of that small percentage of people that are more religious about animal protein and meat who also overlap with other political movements and political sentiments that evade or exclude themselves from research studies, from science, and from formal intellectual inquiry. Those small percentages of individuals, and maybe it's a larger percentage when we're talking about the politics of it, that doubt science, doubt research. I'll say that I partially agree with them in that there are documented cases where you have some science, some scientists, and some laboratories, and some companies that are scientifically driven who were paid off to make statistics and research say something other than what the truth is. Those individuals who say that science is fake, when it comes to some research that's out there, those individuals do have a point. There is some science that is fake. There is some science where if you have a PhD in a given scientific discipline, that you are incentivized to pursue grants, you are incentivized to do the right type of research that is more guaranteed to generate research grants and funding and commercial conversion to products than to do actual science. And then you have science out there that shows that certain things really are bad, but it's covered up and it's paid for in a way where the opposite is shown so that it's like that which is bad for you is shown to be good and that which is good for you is shown to be bad. If that sounded confusing, imagine how everybody else feels when they are now confused to such an extent where it causes you to shut down and you don't know what to believe. So how do I keep my head above water on a lot of this stuff? I do go into critical thinking, logic and problem solving. There's an actual process to that that works very well. I like to observe people over a period of time. I like to observe certain publications and certain sources of information over a period of time. And to the outsider looking in, 
It may look like I'm just gobbling it up. But actually, I'm gathering the information. And then after about six months to a year or so, I come to a conclusion. And I look at certain things. And there are people's names I won't use in this discussion, but there's people whose information I've looked at. And I've come to the conclusion that they are wishy-washy and flip-flop, flippity-flop, and uh, they're not individuals I would recommend as good sources of information. And then there are others who clearly are good researchers, fundamentally good researchers, and they may not communicate well, they may over communicate, or they just may not be the most accessible people in the world, right? But they got good information. And I find those individuals to be quite trustworthy in their intentions and in their pursuit. This world is so big and there is so much that goes on in this world that you can't say that there's an absolute truth. Veganism is not the absolute truth. Vegetarianism is not the absolute truth. Carnivore is not the absolute truth. These are tools and concepts that work for certain people. If I've been consistent in the past couple of videos, it's that. Some things work well for some, and it doesn't work well for others. And where we mess up is where we take that thing that works so well for us and say that it's a universal template for everybody else when it is not. So for those that love meat and that are carnivore, and that is what you want to do, I say have at it and enjoy your life. And for those that align with the way that I pursue diet, through a whole food, plant-based approach, sprinkled in with the right level of research and scientific basis, but who fundamentally follow their heart and follow their own sense of things in terms of the balance between humans and nature, then I say, I have some information for you that you might find useful and worthwhile. If you have any questions about anything I said in this discussion, Hey, let's talk about it in the comments. I'll try to be more gracious in the future and less harsh, but you'll always get candor from me, and we will do what we can to go along this journey together, whether you are in agreement with what I present or you fully agree with what I say, but you just need a little bit more clarification if I am able to provide it or at least point you in the right direction. So I hope this discussion has been great. The sun is about to go down completely. And so I'm gonna wrap this up and I will see you a little bit later. Not physically, not literally, but you know what I mean. And I will have a few more pieces of information to put out in the future, but uh, I'm going to begin to wrap up this discussion on health and diet and that sort of thing. I hope that doesn't disappoint uh, people on that, but it was never my intention to have so much content about health and diet. It's just that I'm on a journey and I needed to document it and put it out there so that I could have it in perpetuity for as long as YouTube exists. And I, at some point, got to get back to my actual content uh, purpose, which is to talk about systems and technology and the evolution of being through this technology process that is not so much about computers, but it's about a way of thinking involving a systems thinking, a geometric thinking, a patterns thinking, and diet, health, and holistic living fit into that. And so I will have more content about that. It just won't be at the pace and intensity and frequency that you have seen in the past. 
And so I hope uh, for those that have benefited from that information, they uh, found it useful. But if somebody does want to uh, see some content on something, I will consider it and see if I can put that together. But in the meantime, I will see you later. Thank you.